Hello everyone, Farhan Ferdi here and unfortunately bad news video. Despite the good news is that I have the long fender installed, I wanted to go to test it in the mud but unfortunately TPMS has informed me that my front tire is just flat. So I thought I have a puncture and that would be really easy because I have Outex kit, I would just plug it with the mushroom plug Happy days, that's what I have it for. Unfortunately, it's more sinister than that. I mean, in my previous videos about Outex, I did say that at the end of the life of the tires, they start to tend to leak around the rim. There's nothing wrong with the tire, there's nothing wrong with the Outex itself, it just starts leaking. Um, I'm not entirely sure if a type of rim does make a difference because Usually it leaks on the front where I don't have tubeless ready rims. Um, on In the rear it usually stays much more stable, but even in the rear they start leaking. Now, with these motos, it's for some strange reason got really, really bad in like a week. Uh, usually I had Metas and it lasted for, for almost 15,000 kilometers without anything. Now I have about 6,000 on the motos and it leaks like crazy. So that's one thing I have to fix. And then another thing is which I need to fix is that um, at about 50 kilometers per hour, I hit a pothole and I have dented the rim on this, um, on this side. Um, and it significantly leaks over there, obviously, because it's just like wah. Um, so the air goes out pretty, pretty quickly. So this is the amount of leakage around the rim and this is not where the rim is dented and on this side this is where the rim is dented uh, yeah, I can feel it with my finger that this is basically hump around here in order to fix this I um, asked Punk Moto and he said well take the tire off um, tap it in a place and I uh, receive the tire so that's what I'm gonna do now The theory of fixing the rim, everywhere on the internet you will read, very straightforward. Take the hammer and beat it back into its correct shape. Well, yes, but I uh, would recommend a few more things. Uh, measuring calipers to know where the health of the rim is and where the dent is. And then obviously to kind of detect whether we are actually fixing the rim or not. Very important because you know you can just beating it up for hours and nothing happens. Um, another piece of puzzle which I used is this little piece. It's a spacer I made which goes inside the rim and reinforces the structure at the bottom of the rim where it's snug and leaves a little bit of uh, free play at the top where the rim is gonna be beat it into the correct place. A tip from Punk Moto, by the way, uh, it worked really well uh, as a protection. Um, then uh, it comes to the hammers. Ideally, a big rubber mallet. It needs to be quite substantial one because the amount of force which needs to go into the rim in order to put it back into the place is really high. Now that brings me to the fact that I didn't have the mallet so I use the hammers and the trickiest part on this whole process is to know how much force needs to go into the rim, how much force you can put into the rim in order to um, fix it. And that's something which I just cannot tell you do as much as you can because I am a programmer. So when I whack something with a hammer, it's going to be completely different than, than someone who's a bodybuilder. Um, so I spent almost three hours building up the force and at some point I was really frustrated uh, and ended up using really massive um, mallet to achieve my goal. And then the process is really simple. Um, I put the rim on something which is really strong and sturdy and doesn't flex. I tried it on this table it didn't work because the, again the table absorbed all of energy 
So something really, really strong. Um, put the spacer in, fix it somehow, clamp it. And then, because I'm not using a rubber mallet, uh, the hard wood, narrow one, so it, it only transfers the weight to the part of the rim which needs to be fixed. And then take the big, massive mallet and whack it. Now, three, four, really hard whack for me. Measured it with the caliper. It moved a little bit and off we go again and then again and then again. Um, after figuring out how much force I need, it was about 30 minutes to fix all four um, dents on the rim. Everything is now fine according to the calipers. So um, I just need to put the tire on and check if, if it really fixed or not. Tire is on and it seems that rim is fixed because there is not a single leak, which is pretty amazing. Mainly because now I know that if I dent the rim, it's not the end game, which was always the big question. Um, I'm really glad that I went through the process, um, despite it was pretty frightening in the beginning. And yes, I did scuff a little bit of my rim um, because I was just silly. But the outcome is that I know that anywhere in the world where any small village which has a hammer or a workshop with the press can fix the rim pretty easily. And I think that is really good because I can keep the tubeless, I can trust the tubeless. The benefit of being able to fix it with the mushroom plug is absolutely amazing, not having to fuss with the tubes. So I really, really like it. I will not be able obviously to fix it on the trail, but for that I have a spare tube, um, which I can squeeze kind of into the rear and in the front for the emergencies and that will get me out of the trouble. Now, the most difficult on this whole process, because in, in essence it's really simple, is to figure out how much force one needs to whack it in order to not damaging the rim, but fixing the rim. And that is something which I would recommend to start um, from kind of the safe force and building it up slowly as I did. And at some point when all the pieces kind of falls into right places, it's just gonna be very easy to do that. And once I have a knack for it, it's probably not gonna be a big issue um, next time. So yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. I hope it was useful, uh, at least for someone. It was definitely useful for my rim. <laughs>